right, we welcome you back to Ventura College for Pirate Basketball here on the VC Sports Network. And Pirate men, 12 and 11 on the season, just nosed over 500. And with five games left in this regular season, looking to take care of business. There is some good news in terms of the conference standings for the Pirates. They are in third place, a game and a half out of first, trailing Moore Park and Allen Hancock. But they have home dates left with each of those teams. So the Pirates, to a certain extent, still have their destiny in their own hands. Have their destiny in their own hands, but uh, we were talking about it off camera leading up to this game. Jeff, a team that has to run the table. The Pirates getting waxed a couple games ago at Helen Hancock. Look, certainly understand that's a tough place to play. Two hours there, two hours back, but... Man, I mean, that's that's a tall order because you go into that tough arena to play in. That was a top five school in the state of California in the 3C2A just a few weeks ago in the previous ranking. When you go up to the rankings, look on the website for the 3C2A, currently ranked 11th in the state. I mean, that team is a contender. Tyson I does a great job up there uh, and a formidable opponent in this conference. But the Pirates, if they can get a win over Moore Park, or Alan Hancock down the stretch, going to bode well for their postseason berth. And they get them both here at home. But they also have to take care of business. That brings us over to Cuesta. Yes, 9-14 and 14 on the season. But they started 1-8. and eight. They've won their last two. This is a completely different team than maybe we saw even a few weeks ago when these two teams met for the first time this season back on January 13th. The Pirates jumped on the Cougars early, took a big lead into the break, ending up cruising to a 32-point win. But it might be arguably even tougher. This is a team that's playing better basketball under head coach Rusty Blair of late. Rusty Blair, you know, it's a team that, you know, they not only they not only recruit out of the state, they recruit out of the country. And a lot of talent on display here tonight. We're going to see it. Pirates come out with Landro Tate, Reese Witterberg, Caleb Gilbert, Carter Alexander, and Dominic Contreras. So uh, the starting five that we have seen of late for Alonzo McCain. Meanwhile, Rusty Blair seems to have settled in to a starting lineup after shuffling his lineup a lot this season as well. They go with Jabral Ray and Drew Ardwan, along with TJ McVitie, Stevie Waiters, and Ethan Walker. So no changes. Walker working down low on Witterberg. Missed the leaner and Tate high up for the board. Nice tough rebound there for Tate. That's a tough assignment for Witterberg handling big Ethan Walker. And Walker had a pretty good look but couldn't get it to go. Gilbert backing down on Waiter's size advantage there. Shot rolls off and off to McVitie. So both teams trade good looks but were still scoreless early. This is Jabral Ray. They'll clear out Contreras on Ray. Good help. But that is good defense on the perimeter. Arduin tiptoeing that baseline. Ray will hoist for three. Missed everything. Waiters on the offensive glass. Shot up and good for Walker. So a couple of offensive rebounds. Let's watch here as Ray wards off Tate. But Walker stays with it. So a 2-0 lead. We bring you back. This is Witterberg. Contreras, nice backdoor cut for Alexander. Double pump won't go, no foul. Gilbert on the offensive glass, lays it up and in. Nice perseverance there from Gilbert. Gilbert struggled mightily in the loss at Allen Hancock with just two points, but he bounced back nicely in the win at Oxnard with 15 points and 12 rebounds. That's a little more uh, K uh, Caleb Gilbert speed against Oxnard. Ardoin as they bring the double and a foul called. Ventura wanted a double dribble. And let's see it here. Arduan, the leading scorer in the Western State North, and like a good call to me there with the bump with Contreras. Yeah. And Arduan uh, did struggle somewhat in the first matchup between these two teams. Walker with good position, goes to the left hand, won't go. Offensive rebound for Walker again. And this is what Walker has brought to the lineup since joining the lineup uh, a few weeks back. He is a physical presence down low, a terrific rebounder. We've already seen a couple of rebounds and four early points for Walker. Yeah, Walker reminds me uh, in the mold of a Ronnie Reedus from Fullerton who won the state championship uh, years ago. That was pre-COVID, I believe. And that was here. 
Lance Coleman, Ronnie Reedus. Coached by Contreras. Perry Webster, Fullerton in the top five yeah. in the rankings. Right back uh, in the top five where they seem to live. Meanwhile, Gilbert matching Walker with four early points. We're tied once again at four. Starting to talk about Arduin and the struggles in the first matchup between these two teams, relatively speaking, but in the last five, he seems to have taken it personally. He has been on fire, averaging just under 30 points a game in his last five. Gilbert, meanwhile, going coast to coast, lays it up and in. Fast start for Caleb Gilbert and a 6-4 lead for the Pirates. Walker, fortunate not to pick up the foul. Shot blocked by Tate. Recovered by Ray. McVitie, leading three-point shooter in the conference at 47%, passes on the three, puts it on the ground, and turns it over. See the block one more time. This is terrific defense. Great anticipation on the rise. Tater on the high screen to the glass, missed the layup. Offensive rebound for Gilbert, and that is off of Caleb Gilbert. We'll have a look at this. Yep. Okay, clean block on the way up from Walker. Yeah, no way. He was certainly the last one to touch it. 6 4, half court trap. Arduin nearly turned it over. Boy, Contreras thought about it and then backed off. Arduin splits a double team. Still on the dribble. And again, they send Tate. Rays open. Waiters Offense. from 15 feet. An offensive foul. That's a great job positioning defensively. Reese Witterberg. And you see there, Witterberg just steps in, takes a charge. Turnover for Cuesta. And they seem to be running a double team at uh, Drew Arduin yeah. early on. I think they're just trying to speed things up, and Ventura doing a good job positioning. Uh, Cuesta, meanwhile, pretty good job running the offense with the extra pass. Just haven't really hit on a couple shots. Great Another backdoor back cut again for Alexander. This time he gets the layup to go. That's a play that they ran earlier. And again, an overcommit from and, Jaden Aris, who's checked into the game. And Jeff, that's a that's a matter of scouting right there. Terrific backdoor. We've seen it twice in the first four minutes of this ball game. I, I think uh, both of us realize where both teams are really going to butter their bread here this evening. Ventura and Quest are going to look to go inside, and that might open up some of the shooting. Yeah, Rusty Blair very animated on the sideline already. Seeing the backdoor cut from Alexander work not once, but twice in the first four minutes. Yeah, you get full on the backdoor once, uh, you know, maybe not over committing on the next one. Same exact player, too. And it's a great job by Alexander making the adjustment and finishing on the layup. Caleb Gilbert with six points early to go along with a couple of rebounds. Ethan Walker with all four points for the Cougars. We're just underway. First half, first of two. Men's and women's doubleheader here on the VC Sports Network. Well, it's, uh, it's an important he evening here. Uh, now, this is a, a graphic made for the, for the women's game, but it's coaches versus cancer here tonight. Obviously, a very important date on uh, every team's schedule. Uh, most teams uh, throughout, the, uh, throughout the state in the free C2A uh, honoring. An important cause as Waiters brings it over. McBeady. This is Arduin around a high screen, gets the three to go. Well, we talked about McBeady and his shooting from long range, but Arduin right there as well. In fact, the entire team shooting 38% for Cuesta. That's a terrific stroke you see right there on the finish. Arduin burying it. Mentioned the streak in the last five games. He's shooting over 50% from three. And we're not talking, you know, four for eight here by 25 for 46. Make it 26 for 47 as he knocks down the three moments ago. Walker checked by Gilbert into the lane. Left-handed scoop won't go. Gilbert wards off. Contreras with the rebound. Got to go. Tate running the break. In the corner, Alexander high arcing three. Rims off no good. Walker with the rebound and a foul in the backcourt. This is going to go against Gilbert. It would be the second on the Pirates. First on Gilbert. Yep. I mean, is there a foul here? I mean, I guess. I mean, it looks like he whiffs. Maybe he gets the hair. I don't know, pretty weak. Yeah, they 
going for the intent there with the swing, whether the contact was there or not. Trying to get that basketball. McVitie into the front court. Leaves it for Arduin. Now McVitie open for three, but Gilbert closes out. Now McVitie will fire off the back iron and out to Gilbert. Kai Johnson has checked in. Johnson so critical for this Pirate team as well, coming off the bench, along with Vernon Henry. So Alonzo McCain goes to the bench early. The turnover. Cuesta back the other way, all the way to the glass, lays it up and in, going coast to coast. Jake Bershoil. you got to stop the ball. What are you doing? In on Gilbert. That's a nice job. Finishing with the left hand. Doing a nice job with the right arm not to commit the offensive foul. Smart play by Gilbert, not picking up foul number two in back-to-back -back plays. Johnson's long three is short, and the Cougars on a 5-0 run, now looking to extend on a one-point lead. Johnson gets into the passing lane. Better that time with active hands, but Gilbert going to come out. And here comes Caleb Giesendorfer. So it's Witterberg with Alexander. No, Jeff, I, I'm really not going to put that on Gilbert, I mean, what is he supposed to do? He just picked up his first foul. He knows he's got to stay in. You have to come off. Fade away from Arduin is good. Man. That is a pretty stroke. Meanwhile, Waiters nearly pokes it free. Get a look at the work of Drew Arduin. Hey, you cannot let him get to the elbow, Stoy. For the Cougars. Henry dancing on the dribble. Back outside to Alexander. Finds Johnson. Johnson working on McVitie, spins right. Travel. Turnover anyway. And that pass partially tipped and then stolen by Waiters. Vershoil into the front court, no numbers for the Cougars. Arduin, checked by Alexander. You see, so he's, he is attacking the elbow. He wants to get to his spot. Very Kobe-esque. Hard drive, the fake, and then the missed layup for Waiters. Man. Waiters had a pretty good look. Yeah, uh, quite the hard both teams drive. really have uh, missed a couple cookies. Three points. The lead for the Cougars. Henry. Checked by Waiters. Witterberg up top. Will fire for three. No. Johnson on the offensive glass. Travel. In a crowd. No call. And ripped away by Waiters. Johnson comes away somewhat gingerly. And I think that might have been a foul right there. I mean, if you're going to call somebody getting hit in the hair, how about calling something when somebody gets hit in the forehead? Long three in and out, and Henry has the rebound. Ignacio Diaz missing on his first shot attempt. Henry around to Giesendorf for screen. Henry to the crossover. Layup won't go, but a foul called. So Vernon Henry. We got there just a little late. Pretty good crossover from Vernon Henry, who's got, who's got a pretty good one. I yeah, really didn't have a lot of room to finish there. Lucky to get the ball up on the rim, but Henry, Henry, Henry a good job forcing the issue, getting the call. A 54% foul shooter heads to the line. It's the first. That breaks the Cougar run. 11-9, the Pirates back within two. Henry among several players for the Pirates who struggled up at Allen Hancock in a short stint. Had just two points and three turnovers, but bounced back in short minutes, hitting both his shots in the win at Oxnard. Oh, 54%, that's a pretty good job of uh, yep. settling down and bearing both. We get the feeling with free throws that so much of it is there's a mental aspect to it where uh, there are players that clearly have the stroke to shoot a better percentage than they do. And it's about establishing a routine. McVitty to the fadeaway. Won't go. Alexander has the rebound. I think if you're Ventura, you'll take that shot every day of the week. Henry in on McVitie. Euro step and kicks it back out. Alexander will leave for Henry. Under 12 minutes to go, first half. One point lead for the Cougars early. Witterberg on the drive. Shot clock running down. Got to hurry now. Giesendorfer lost the handle out of play over to the Cougars. And Mike, I had the feeling on that last set, 
uh, the basketball was moving, but the players not moving. And the Pirates end up running down the shot clock, and Giesendorfer turns it over trying to make something happen. One point lead for the Cougars. Diaz, Ardoin for three. Off the back iron, long rebound. It's on the floor, dug out by Alexander. Alexander into the front court, no numbers. Now in some trouble, trapped on the baseline, but finds Johnson. Nice pass. Henry, open for three, short. Giesendorfer tries to keep it alive, but Diaz steps in for the steal. Off to Vershoil, running the floor, good, and a foul. You see here, defensive player just bails out at the very end, doesn't take it. Takes it in the shoulder, not the chest. That's going to be the call. Yeah, Jeffrey Buhan leading the break and finding Vershoil. Rutherford picks up the foul. Yeah, he's not set. He, he needs to be set a second prior. Takes it in the shoulder. That's a good call. Yeah, that is insult to injury for Beckham Rutherford because he still got a lot of the contact there and picked up the foul for his troubles as well, 14-10. Did all that for nothing. <laughs> right. Johnson looking for a Giesendorfer screen. Comes up shooting from 10 feet, rimming no. Giesendorfer on the glass. His follow won't go, but he's fouled, and Giesendorfer continues to be one of the better rebounders in the Western State North in short minutes. He's third in the conference at rebounding per 40 minutes. So he comes off the bench as a physical presence, gets on the offensive glass, and earns a couple of free throws. In and out with the first. Giesendorfer has started to see more time once again in conference play. Averaging nine points, 4.3 rebounds during the conference schedule. One out of two from the line. 14-11. Cougars with the three-point lead and the ball. Arduin checked by Contreras again. They run Rutherford. Walker. Nice pass. Looks a pass outside. Vershoil open three. No good. Long rebound on the floor. And McVitie recovers. A second chance for the Cougars. You dodge, a, you dodge a bullet on the missed corner three there from Quest. I mean, he's wide open. Great look from Walker. Buhan. Again, Vershoil open and a whistle before the shot. It's going to go against Cuesta. We're going to have a pretty good look of it here. It's going to go against Buhan. That time, Contreras. Yep. Well set defensively. Yep. Pirates can creep within one or tie with a long one. Tate tries to leave the pass. Giesendorfer there. Forces up a shot, and won't you gotta, go. you got to be stronger than and that. Giesendorfer wanted a foul called none coming. Long three for Arduin around and out. Rebound on the floor. Buhan another offensive rebound early for the Cougars. Tate with another steal. Beckham Rutherford into the front court. It's a four on four, so Rutherford going to slow it down. Uh, Tate and Rutherford in the backcourt. Not a lot of offense. Giesendorfer's three, too strong. Contreras on the offensive glass lays it in. It's just good individual effort from Contreras, who had a monster game in the first matchup between these two teams. A season-high 32 for Contreras in the win back on January 13th. Meanwhile, Arduin. That's a pretty stroke. I know you're a fan, Mike. That is that is just I mean, a just, smooth offensive game from I Drew Arduin. Just a great mid-range. Nice pump fake. Giesendorfer puts it on the floor. Good feed for Contreras. Blocked! It was either Walker or McVitie. Contreras answers on the other end with a block. Buhans miss won't go. Travel? And Walker in a crowd is fouled. Ethan Walker going to head to the line. Well, it turned into a block party. Let's watch here, finding I mean, that's Gilbert. A where's the foul? I, I want to know where the foul is. Hits him in the face. Where's the foul? No call. Okay. Not a block. That's yeah. a foul. Yeah, because it's McVitie. I think what's interesting is it's McVitie that gets the block, 
but arguably it was Walker who committed the foul. Also there. And then Walker in a crowd. And then that's a foul. He gets all ball up top. That's a terrible sequence for the refs. Walker's free throws are good. 18-13. Well, that is arguably a four-point turnaround. The two the Pirates don't oh. get. <laughs> and the two that Walker gets, 18-13. The lead is five. This is the largest for either team. Gilbert's three. Off the back iron. Waiters high up for the board. And, Jeff, you know, we talked about the Allen Hancock game and forcing the issue from three. All the threes have not been good shots in this game for the Pirates. Arduin, three is short. Tate corrals the long rebound. Four on three if they hurry. Tate into the lane. Alexander open for three. No. That was, that was the best three they've shot. They get it back to Alexander. Is that a pick? Tate looking for a Gilbert screen. On the drive, nice. Euro step, layup good. Pretty. Landro Tate joined the lineup seven games ago, and in the seven game stretch that since Tate became a starter, they are five and two. He's been a nice addition to the starting five, 18 15. Oh, whether you're a fan of the Euro step, that's legal now, and that was a pretty move. Buhan around a Walker screen. That, that's the guy you can't lose. Waiters. Buhan's three, good. Apparently Buhan also someone you can't lose. Jeffrey Buhan. And that, Mike, I think he's just entirely too open. Too open, right? Into, it, right it bounces right into his pocket. 21-15, Alexander. Checked by Waiters. Nice. Gilbert working on Walker. Walker with the block. Rebound to Buhan. And now the Cougars who enjoy their largest lead at six, can extend under seven minutes to go first half. Picked up by Contreras in a switch. They send the trap. Near steal, McVitie open for three. It's good. Well, we mentioned McVitie. Well, falling off the rails now here, Stoy. And that's, that's a bit of bad luck. You get a deflection. And... If anybody should know about what T.J. McVitie can do, it's the Pirates. He was 6 of 9 from 3 en route to 20 points in the first matchup between these two teams. So they got a pretty good look yeah. at that 3-point shooting. Timeout on the floor, 24-15. Cuesta with the early lead. It's Ventura Basketball here on the BC Sports Network. The Ribbons of Life Breast Cancer Foundation was formed to meet a community need to have a non-institutional, independent, grassroots organization to provide breast cancer education, advocacy, emotional and social support to Ventura County. This is the 16th year for the Ribbons of Life Breast Cancer Game hosted by Ventura College Women's Basketball. And to date, the team has raised over $36,000. More importantly, the event has raised awareness of breast cancer, early detection, and survivability of the disease throughout the Ventura community. You too can donate to the Ribbons of Life Breast Cancer Foundation by scanning the QR code on the screen. Thank you for your support. And we bring you back live, 24-15. Nine point lead for the Cougars. Contreras on the drive, nice up shot. and in. Three point opportunity for Contreras. Well. He led the way in the first matchup between these two teams, and uh, that is one of the first times they've gone to him tonight. And he immediately delivers again. A little English on that ball, 24-17. Very Cedric Sabalo-esque. He'd be proud. Played here at Ventura College briefly. There is a look at Dominique Contreras. Interesting looking at the numbers for Contreras in the last 17 games. Contreras only in double figures on two occasions, so he's not one of the principal offensive options. But those two games were huge, including the 32 points against Quest in the first matchup. So Contreras is a guy who can fill it up when he gets the shots. 
Meanwhile, let's look at the replay there, and did he step on the line? Checked by Rutherford. Oh, blocked by the table. It was close enough to where they called it. So the turnover gives the Pirates a chance to cut into this six-point deficit. Nice Alexander screen. out of the weave, missed the three. Rebound batted around and controlled by Buhan. Arduin into the front court with no numbers. Travel! Buhan, oh, got away with a the travel there. No question about it. The Cougars with a golden opportunity after that gift. Walker working down low. Jump stop goes to the left hand. No good. Rutherford with the rebound. That was a brutal travel. Well, when I can call it, you know it's obvious. Step back three for Contreras. The Pirates decidedly Ofer. cold. Over from three. From long range here in this first half. Perhaps lucky to still be within six yeah. as much as they are struggling, particularly from long range. High screen for Walker. Gilbert bringing the pressure off to Waiters. Back outside, Buhan open for three. It's short, but Waiters on the offensive glass. Better Too many that offensive time rebounds. Arduin working against Alexander into the lane. Waiters, the floater won't go. Gilbert tips the rebound to himself. Nice job. Yeah, time to look at some numbers here in the first half, but it is not a pretty picture of the Pirates. Mike, you mentioned it. Over. They're 0 for 10 from three here in the first half. I think they were 2 for 15 in the loss at Allen Hancock. Walker perhaps baiting that pass. Steps in front. Buhan has the steal. Pirates do a good job getting back. McVitie open for three. That's good. They lose him again in transition. McVitie with a couple of threes in the first half. The lead back out to nine for the Cougars. It's a bad look for Rutherford there. Doesn't doesn't really offer much in way of a challenge on the close. And it's a wide open triple. Nine point lead for Cuesta. Alexander working against Arduin, spins into the lane, has that shot blocked. McVitie wants to run. In on Contreras. Kicks it back out, Waiters from 16. No good. Rebound fought for. I think that's off Who's it off of? It's gonna be off of Witterberg. We'll have a great look here. This might have been off of TJ, TJ McVitie. Oh, that's a great job. I think it is. I think it's a good call. Yeah, I think it's off of both, but yeah. I think I think they're going to give it to yeah, the Winterberg. player with the forward momentum to where the ball went out. Yeah, arguably pushing that one yeah. out of the hands of McVitie. The call goes to the Cougars. Arduin, corner three is good. Yeah. Well, three-point shooting, as is so often the case, the storyline here in this first half, the Cougars with a decided advantage from three-point range. Back live, Giesendorfer too strong. Tate crashing the boards, it's out of bounds. Back to Cuesta, and the situation starts to be a little precarious here, Michael. It's a 12-point lead, and right now the momentum all in favor of Cuesta. It's, it's coming off the rails here at the end of the first half for Ventura, and they're gonna have to get right. Cuesta five of 12 from three-point range. 42%, the Pirates 0 of 10. Meanwhile, Drew Arduin, 10 points in the first half to lead all scorers. Stevie Waiters at the controls. McVitie puts it on the floor, into the lane, left-handed scoop, won't go. Tate with the rebound. Got to go. Tate jets into the front court. Behind his back to the rim, hanging in the air, no good. And the rebound pulled down oh. by Arduin. Tate with a great look, but couldn't get the finish. Buhan leans over the dribble. You have to attack him. A lot him. of pressure from Witterberg. Plenty of time on the shot clock, down to 10. Arduin drives on Tate, Walker. Off the glass and in. The strength of Ethan Walker to finish at the rim. Moved into the lineup back on December 9th, and they are 7-4 since Ethan Walker joined the starting lineup. 
after they started 1-8 and eight this season. So again, this is a team that's a lot different than the 9-14 and 14 record might suggest. Meanwhile, a tie up down low. The possession arrow will give it to Quest, and with 2.18 to go, the lead has swelled to 14 for the Cougars. Well, Jeff, I think more concerning right now outside of the score is the body language. Look at the body language. Nobody fired up. Hands on the hips, hands on the knees. Well, I think what's interesting is you see isolated plays where guys are really laying out there. We've seen Contreras, Landro Tate, Kai Johnson at times. But I agree with your overall point, which is I think the team it, it doesn't seem to have the energy. It's almost as if they're sort of taking turns. Yeah, as, as a collective you know, putting unit. Putting that effort. Yeah, as a collective unit, the cohesion, as we talked about, a team that needed to come together down the stretch here yeah. in their conference schedule has done anything but in this first half. Pirates down 14 to 18 to go in the first. And Cuesta with possession. Well, Kai Johnson comes off the bench. Uh, he's one of the returning sophomores for this team. Uh, let's see if they could get a lift uh, from Kai Johnson in the latter stages here. Maybe try and get this down to 10 going into the half. They're down 14 right now. Buhan. On the drive. Arduin checked by Tate. Tate all over Arduin. Waiters on the curl. Finds Walker up on Johnson. Missed the layup, and Contreras has the rebound. Got to go. For you got numbers. Well, where's, where's the acceleration? Get into the front court. Put Check. the defense on his heels. You're down by 14. Where is the sense of urgency? Witterberg. Contreras will try for a three around and out. Actually okay with that shot from Contreras, just can't get it to go. Still over in the first half are the Pirates from three-point range. Arduin. Travel! Buhan from the elbow, rimming no. They try to tap. Contreras taps the rebound and ends up with Johnson. Johnson into the front court. One more. Alexander Go. McVitie closes out. Alexander pulls up from 15, missed the shot. Just can't buy a bucket. That was a good look from Alexander and the rim unkind. Under a minute to go, the Pirates sitting at 18 points in the first half. Arduin for a three, rimming no. Better close out there from Contreras. Arduin looking for a foul. Alexander into the front court. Contreras finds Witterberg open for three. No. Nice job by McVitie on the boards. Cougars can play for the final shot if they want. Johnson with the near steal. I thought that went off of Artemis. We'll have a pretty good look here. No. And Johnson, good hands. No. So 22.1, and again, the Cougars can play for the final shot, and you can't get a much bigger turnaround than the first matchup between these two teams when the Pirates put 57 on the board in the first half up at Cuesta en route to a 106-74 win. Oh, how the tables have turned. Just 18 points on the board here in the first half at home. They work it around. Buhan will try for three, no. Walker with the offensive rebound and the follow at the buzzer. Walker cleans it up and the Cougars will take a 34-18 lead into the break.
The numbers in the first half don't tell a pretty story. Pirates shooting 22% from the field, 0 of 12 from long range. Meanwhile, Cuesta shooting 38%, but 5 of 14 for 36% from three. The rebounds 22-21 in favor of Cuesta. And the offensive rebounds, actually a one rebound advantage for the Pirates, but uh, Michael, uh, to my memory, uh, Cuesta certainly taking more advantage of the offensive rebounds that they've had. Uh, we don't have second chance points right in front of us, but uh, a number of putbacks and uh, capitalizing on second chances for the Cougars en route to this 16 point lead as we start the second half with Tate, Alexander, Witterberg, Contreras, and Gilbert back on. So the starting five for the Pirates. They've got time but they trail by 16 and they start with a turnover as it is dug out by Jabral Ray. Cougars counter with their starting five. Ray along with Waiters in the backfield. Arduin, McVitie, and Walker up front. McVitie into the lane. Walker, a drive on Gilbert to the glass. The layup is good. Walker continues to impress. He's got 12. That actually leads the Cougars, Arduin, with 10 in the first half. And now the Cougars have doubled up the Pirates at 36-18. Winterberg. Contreras for three. Gilbert on the offensive glass. Winterberg jump stop and a late whistle. And are they going to get Walker here on the push? Again, might be having a slight issue with the scoreboard. As I see Mike Zapata working on it right now. The time is accurate, 18.57 remaining. But the Cougars with a 36-18 lead as Reese Witteberg heads to the line. First free throw in the air and in the basket. Witteberg, a 91% foul shooter, averaging 9.1 points a game. That his first point tonight. Second free throw is good. 16 point lead as the Pirates will show full court pressure. Now they back off. Waiters over the timeline. Arduin checked by Tate. Ray will back it out. Around a Walker screen. Picked up by Gilbert in a switch. McVitie on the dribble all the way around. Now picks it up, goes to the fadeaway. It's short. Good Tate defense. has the rebound. Solid defense there from the Pirates. Finds Witterberg, puts it on the floor. Witterberg in a crowd. Shot blocked, but Witterberg's foul, follow is there. That's a good job by Reese Witterberg. Really no <laughs> block. He might have gotten away with the travel yes, there, Mike. Did. I'm not sure yes, that I did. saw the block. That's called a passing to yourself. Self-assisted from Witterberg. Walker, nice double hands. team from Winterberg, and it is off of Ventura. Is it, though? Oh, I think that's off of Walker. Let's see if that's off the leg right there. Yeah, that left knee. Yeah. Oh, maybe off the foot of Winterberg. Meanwhile, the three is ah. good for the Cougars. Quickly inbound. They get a cheap one. 39-22. It looked like Witterbrook caught his foot coming off of the yeah, leg. Yeah, it was definitely off of Walker, and then it maybe just caught the foot. Alexander on the drive, wiped away by Walker. Walker's been huge. Waiters into the front court. Near steal. Ray on the drive. Walker in the lane, steps through the double team, lost it on the way up. Yep. Stripped out of there, and the Pirates back the other way with a two-on-two. -two. Gilbert in on McVitie, the runner around and out. Got to get back. Got to hustle back. Arduin leaves it for Waiters. Witterberg on Arduin. They clear out for Ray. Finds Waiters, the 12-footer is good. Jeff, here's the difference. You have one team that constant movement defensive or offensively. That's just a great job of moving without the basketball and finding an open shot. Yeah, Waiters Meanwhile, watch this. 
One person moves, everybody watches, and it's a terrible shot. And what kind of offense is Ventura running right now? 41-22. Started to say about Waiters uh, averaging just over six points a game, but he's picked it up of late. That was his first two tonight. But in the last couple of wins, Waiters has been averaging 10 points a game to go along with the rebounds and assists. Six of each in the last couple wins. Fadeaway is good from Ardoin, 43-22. Cougars starting to pull away here in the second half. I mean, that is a textbook jumper mid-range from Ardoin. This is the largest lead. Gilbert for three, rimming no. Are they still over from three? Yes. Wow. Just can't seem to find the bottom of the bucket. And the lead now is 21. Yeah, we're 25 minutes in. It's the Blutarski from three. Uh, that looks like goes Witterberg. No call. Ardoin for three and knocks it down. Cougars in danger of turning this one into a laugher. They are up 24. Man. Pirates looking for a spark from anywhere. Closest they got was this man right here, Caleb Gilbert, early on. Had the first six points, but he's been quiet since. Another turnover. Wholesale substitutions here. Yeah, the Pirates going to go with an almost entirely new lineup as yeah. Johnson and Henry will come on. Well, Coach McCain looking for an answer and right now. I mean, Jeff, you just go back to that last turnover there from Gilbert. You know, re really out of his comfort zone, trying to operate 20 feet away from the basket. You know, where the pass was intended, that's an offensive foul. The pass that was intended, there's two players there. There's no spacing. Yeah. Well, I can only imagine that one of the most difficult things is to stay focused on the entire game when you are struggling the way that the Pirates are to get anything going offensively. It would only be natural to try and press. Johnson's high arcing shot won't go. Giesendorfer on the offensive glass. The follow is no good. Johnson in a crowd is fouled. Better effort that time on the boards from the Pirates. Well, this might be their most physically imposing lineup with Giesendorfer and Johnson on the floor together. And you see them both go to the offensive glass. And now Johnson will head to the line. Johnson, the sophomore, the first free throw is up and good. He's a 76% foul shooter. But Johnson been struggling of late over the last six games, averaging just under six points a game. And, of course, those that have followed the Pirates for any length of time, certainly last year and going into this year, know that Kai Johnson is a exceptionally talented offensive player, certainly capable of filling it up. But perhaps symptomatic of the Travel. team overall, Johnson and the Pirates uh, still trying to figure out their roles, where the shots are going to come from. Meanwhile, McVitie on the drive with the ball out of bounds, going to stay with Cuesta. One, two, three. I mean, what what are we doing? That's not a Euro step. That's a travel. And that's off a of Walker. <laughs> Been that kind of a night. Walker missed the layup. His follow is good. Walker continues to be a force in the lane. And the strength to put that one up and in. He's got 14. Well, no Derek Young tonight. They certainly could have used him. Giesendorfer. His three is good. All right. Caleb Giesendorfer, first three tonight for the Pirates as a team. Are they going to call Well, they're going to call that a long two. So Giesendorfer doesn't get credit for the three. The Pirates still looking for their first three. They trail it by 22. Vershoil on, finds Walker. He'll try for three. Around and out. It was a two. Henry into the lane outside. Open look for Alexander, no good. And Alexander, a tough night from the floor. Waiters. Great movement. They Man. find McVitie open for three, in and out. Witterberg with the rebound. Boy, that is a good look for TJ McVitie. Pirates dodge a bullet, but they still trail it by 22. 13-36 and counting remaining in the ballgame. Giesendorfer, good position down low, working against Walker. Double pump, no good, but a foul called. It's going to be the second on Walker. He 
Eisendorfer back to the line. Pirates 0 for 15 from three-point range. And needless to say, in the first matchup between these two teams, that kind of struggle from the floor was not part of the storyline for the Pirates, who shot 63% from the floor in the first matchup between these two teams. Oh, how things have changed here in matchup number two. Pirates shot 41%, hitting nine threes in the first matchup. And tonight, still looking for their first. And a predictably subdued crowd here at Ventura College. Always a nice evening coming here to check out Ventura College basketball, but not a lot to get excited about on the floor here tonight with the Pirates trailing by 22. I will say the highlight of tonight so far was the drive up here. <laughs> 13-29. A sign of things to come. Uh, Giesendorf hitting the first three of the ball game. What are they, one of 15 now? No, they called it a two. 48-26. Okay, so sorry. Excuse me. You're yeah. right. So he's still over. Are the are the Pirates? First free throw is good. And you know it, it's easy to you know zero in on the struggles of the Pirates uh, here in this one, but uh, shouldn't be lost is the credit due to Cuesta College coming in here. Uh, we made reference at the top. This was a team that started one and eight. They're now 9-14, and 14, so they are a team that has been steadily improving as this season has gone on. They've won their last two. They're certainly well on their way, potentially, to a third win in a row, and they've done a great job uh, turning around. And here's what's interesting about this team is if you look at the last few years, it's the third time in four years that the Cougars have gotten off to a very slow start and then improved noticeably by the end of the year. 2019, they started out 2-9. 2021, they started out 3-11. and 11. This year, they started out 1-8. and eight. So a little struggle getting out of the gate, but by the end of the year, Rusty Blair has them playing <laughs> great basketball. Who this year, shot? more of the same as Arduin is fouled and has a chance for a three-point play. Yeah, no question. Henry gets him on the forearm. And Arduin, who's got 17, heads to the line. He has been caution flammable since the last meeting between these two teams, just under 30 points a game. He's, He's a got walking, 18 here tonight. The walking can of kerosene. 51-28. Johnson puts it on the floor. Now wants Giesendorfer. Be strong. Down low against McVitie. Little contact, no foul. Knocked out of play. Is it off of Henry? Certainly looked like it. It's going to belong to the Pirates. Well, Giesendorfer, a little stronger down there. Don't overcommit to the baseline. He goes, basically, he added the, the backboard as a defender. Johnson directing traffic. Will try for three. That's good. All right. There we go. Kai Johnson gets the Pirates off the schneid from long range, 51-31. Well, uh, Mike, as you reference quite often, the three is the great equalizer, and you can knock down a few. You can cut into a deficit in a hurry. Still over 12 minutes to go. Tipped and stolen by Tate. Tate in by himself, lays it in. Pirates within 18, and the Cougars are going to burn a quick timeout with 12-11 remaining in the game. You're watching Ventura College Basketball on the VC Sports Network.
51-33. Well, hey, first three of the ball game officially now for the Pirates, and then uh, a quick steal going the other way, quick 5-0 run for Ventura. They've got it under 20. Yeah, and Rusty Blair wastes no time. Yeah. Takes an immediate timeout it's to settle his team down as we wind down toward 12 minutes to go. The Cougars are in control, leading by 18, but 12 minutes is an eternity. Buhan has checked in, passes on the three. McVitie, they work it around to Arduin. Diaz. Better defense this time for the Pirates. McVitie goes to the left hand, in and out, and the rebound off to Johnson. Nearly make the shot on that one, but that's a better job defensively throughout the entire possession by the Pirates. They force a tough shot, it's a miss, now they gotta go to work. Need some movement on offense here. Henry checked by Waiters. Kai Johnson driving on McVitie. Double pump, no, but a foul and call. That, that's what you need now. You need free throws, and you got to make your free throws. You need to get the defense on the heels. Every possession down, either kick out or attack. More so attack because best thing about the free throws, hey, look, the three is great, but the three can result in long caroms, uh, extra possessions, but the clock's moving. Free throws, clock ain't moving. And you want to chip away at this 18-point lead. Kai Johnson, a couple times this season, he's gone over 20 points coming off the bench. He is a talented offensive player, and he can put some points up in a hurry. He's got a quick five here in the last minute. Pirates on a 7-0 run. They're back within 16. Coach Blair, bring back Walker. Long throw, and they find Waiters. Nice defense. Henry is back. This is Buhan. you got to stay home on everybody else. The ball goes inside. That's a great job by Walker. Work it around. Arduin pulls up from 18 and hits. Story, I mean, that's not bad defense. That's just a tough shot. Look at the shot here. Quick gather to the spot. Boom. Yeah, See Alexander ya. able to recover and challenge, but... The elevation for Arduin, who's got 20 to lead all scores. Johnson into the lane. Floater won't go. Rebound to Buhan. One and done for the Pirates. What a luxury when you can go to a guy like Drew Arduin. When the other team's making a little run. You can just knock down a shot like that. Long three for Arduin. Around and out. Rebound on the floor. Giesendorfer was trying to corral it, and it's going to stay with Cuesta. They're going to say this is off of Caleb Giesendorfer. There's heat check three here for Mardivan. Yeah. Yep. And let's go back live and midway through the second half. Arduin. Working you you got to run. Tape. The double team's got to be there quicker. Johnson gets the block. It's off to Henry. Henry wants to run. Gotta it's go. a three on one if they hurry. Henry to the rim. Layup no good, but ah. a foul call. <laughs> Vernon Henry going to head to the line. Stevie Waiters with his first foul. I mean, your hand's free. That you got to finish that. There's no reason you should miss that layup. Yeah, ultimately ends up with a pretty good look. Nobody there. Maybe lost the handle on the way up and then misses the first free throw. And again, the Pirates putting themselves in a position where they are going to be, they're going to need to be pretty close to perfect. Down the stretch here, still trailing by 18 with 10-16 to go. 0 for 2 for Henry. Now Walker in some trouble in the backcourt, but gets it off to Waiters. Waiters jets into the front court, but the Pirates are back. High screen from McVitie. Arduin. Buhan in the corner, shot clock down to 10. Looking for a screen from Walker. And Johnson, good post defense, steps in front into the front court. Alexander passes on the three. Johnson wants Giesendorfer. Double team comes. Johnson not going to take the three. Henry 
Driving on Walker, runner off the back iron. McVitie in a crowd has the rebound. Arduin walks it into the front court. A drive on Tate, layup no good. Walker on the offensive glass, lays it in. Ethan Walker with 16. He's also got seven rebounds. And a number of those are offensive rebounds. He has been a nightmare for the Pirates. In the paint, Giesendorfer steps through too strong with the left hand. And the Pirate run that saw them get back within 16 has stalled. McVeady too strong. And the pass out of bounds was this tipped. Meanwhile, changes for the Pirates. Contreras, Witterberg, Gilbert all return. And it is going to be a Pirate turnover. Timeout taken. 8.36 remaining in the ballgame. Cuesta on top, 55-35 on the VC Sports Network. point lead for the Cougars who have the ball and the Pirates with a mighty struggle on the offensive end tonight just 35 points on the board against the Cuesta team that saw the Pirates put 106 on the board a few weeks back up at Cuesta Walker into the lane Buhan open for three no good rebound off to Tate Tate quickly back the other way. Nearly lost the handle. Gilbert, they clear out and Walker with the bump. Third foul on Ethan Walker. Gilbert gonna head to the line. Caleb Gilbert got off to the quick start here tonight. Misses the front end. So another missed free throw for the Pirates. And a 20 point cushion for the Cougars and the Pirates not doing themselves a whole lot of favors. Trying to cut into this deficit. McFeedy trying to split the double team and Tate with another steal. Well, that is one of the things that Landro Tate has brought to this lineup since he stepped in seven games back. Tate averaging 1.6 steals since joining the starting lineup. Contreras knocks down the three. 55-38, it's a 17-point game. As Dominic Contreras finds the range, but the Cougars content to work the shot clock now. Arduin in the lane, shot clock at 12. Winding down towards seven minutes to go. Again, a reminder, women's game coming up at the conclusion of this one. Three from Arduin won't go. Tate back the other way into the lane. 
Now surrounded back outside. Witterberg steps in, goes to the floater and hits. Reese Witterberg from 15 feet. Pirates within 15. Last stand perhaps here for the Pirates, who are going to need a big run. Walker has that one pinned on the glass by Gilbert and going back to the Pirates. Caleb Gilbert with the rejection. Well, you see a long one here potentially, Michael, and it's 12 points. Not over yet. But the Pirates looking to continue the run. They're on a 5-0 run. Henry outside. Alexander open for three, rimming no. Walker warding off Gilbert. Another rebound for Ethan Walker. Been outstanding since joining the starting lineup. He's averaging 10 rebounds a game, getting close to that number here tonight. Walker in from the left. That one caroms off to Alexander. Here comes Henry. Can't afford to stay stagnant here, trading possessions. Henry fouled on the drive. Going to head to the line. He's 2 of 4 from the line tonight. Suffice it to say, got to knock down your free throws here. If you're the Pirates, 55-40, 15-point game. And there is a look at Vernon Henry. It's the first free throw. Henry. In a similar vein to Marcus Watson uh, a season ago, another recruit out of the Chicago area. Out of PHH Prep in Chicago. Coming out to sunny California to play his college bowl. Hits both free throws, 55-42. Quest are going to take a quick timeout. 13-point game with 5.50 remaining. Ventura College Basketball on the VC Sports Network. Point lead for Cuesta. They'll work at the length of the court. 5.50 remaining. Pirates on a 7-0 run. This is as close as they've been in the second half. They'll show some pressure. Off to Arduin. Jabral Ray has returned for Cuesta as well. Arduin from 14 feet knocks it down. You know, Mike, we so often talk about spacing, and that's great recognition for Arduin finding an open spot on the floor. Henry on the drive. 57-44, Pirates stay within 13. But needless to say, can't trade baskets at this point. Ray checked by Contreras. That's an offensive foul. A yeah, little push off with that off arm. Clearly a push-up, and he extends it. Arduin Another one against Henry nice outside. McVitie on the drive, tries to shovel the pass, finds Walker in a crowd, has that one blocked on the way up. Follow is blocked, and there's the shot clock. The Pirates get the stop, 
but they want to run. Witteberg into the front court will pass on the three. Standing dribble for Kai Johnson. Johnson all by himself. A little push from McBeady. 1-1. One one. I, I want to know if this, a, if this is a push off. <laughs> In the words of one of, one, of, one of our favorite movies, I'd say that's a big yes. Of course, we have the advantage of replay and the dedicated camera to, to such calls, but. I mean, the referee's right there. Yeah. Johnson hits the first free throw. The Pirates now 15 of 19 at the line. That is one area tonight where they have enjoyed a big advantage. Quested just four of four from the line. Two for two for Johnson. Pirates within 11. 4.30, they bring some pressure. Waiters to McVeady. Arduin. Henry bringing some pressure off to Ray. Shot clock at 14. Ray will back it out, looking for a high screen from Walker. Baseline drive, good feed to Walker. Gilbert getting back with the block, but he fouled Walker. That is a nice feed from Jabral Ray. Yep. And Walker will head to the line. Ethan Walker, a 60% foul shooter. Hits the first free throw. Well, not many free throws tonight, but the attempts they've had, they've made the most. Five of five as a team. It's a double-double for Ethan Walker. One out of two. There's the announcer jinx for you. Walker trying to chase down his own rebound and does. They're going to say this is off of Witterberg. This is terrible. Well, we're going to have a great look at it here. This is a killer for the Pirates. Yep. 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 Arduin step back. Three is good. Drew Arduin. For the hard way, for the Cougars, pushes the lead back to 15. Walk, I should say Johnson on the drive is fouled. Man. He's going to head to the line, and that is a real dagger. You think moments ago, one out of two for Walker, but give Ethan Walker a ton of credit. The hustle, chasing that ball down after he saw that was going to come off. It's off of Ventura, and then Arduin. <laughs> delivers the dagger. I want to see if he left early. Well, well this is going to go back to the last one for the Arduin three. Meanwhile, Johnson misses on the first free throw. He's got one more coming. Well, the Pirates put, him in, put themselves in a position where they were going to have to be near perfect to come back, and you just can't afford the second chance for Cuesta and the three from Arduin to make it a 15-point game. Waiter stepping through. He's fouled. Upon further review, did not leave early. First on Witterberg. Just the fourth on the Pirates as a team. Cuesta, meanwhile, already in the double bonus. So the Pirates shooting free throws the rest of the way, two at a time. Jabral Ray into the front court. Cuesta with the 14-point lead. Alexander bringing the pressure. Tate has been locked up with Arduin for a lot of tonight. Picks his pocket. Arduin the near steal back, but Pirates still have it. Witterberg will lay it up and in. I'll tell you, the individual defense by Landro Tate, and he is able to get the steal, and the Pirates convert. It's a 12-point game with 324. Remaining, you're watching Ventura College Basketball on the BC Sports Network.
Pirates trying to claw their way back. After trailing by 20 plus here in the second half, they're down 12, but running out of time. 324 remaining in the ball game. They'll bring the pressure, Waiters in the backcourt. They get it over, finding Ray. The trap comes, Ray gets the pass to McBeady. What's the call? You call timeout? That's and a foul? It's going to go against Kai Johnson. Right here, they've got Ray in some trouble. That's a good job by McBeady to come in and make himself available. Meanwhile, Walker scoring again. And the lead back to 14 for Cuesta. Johnson, step back, three is good. Kai Johnson. It's an 11 point game, Tate trying to keep it alive. It'll stay with Cuesta. Meanwhile, Kai Johnson now with 13 to lead the Pirates. Still just 11 points if you can come up with some stops. Arduin now can run a little clock. Looking for a walker screen. Here comes the trap. Ray into the lane, to the right hand. Walker on the offensive glass again. Gilbert gets the block, but a whistle comes in. They're going to get a foul on Gilbert? Yeah, it's going to be on Gilbert. Well, some of this is just set up by the Cougars' ability. And, yeah, I think that's a good call, getting him on the left arm there as he goes with the shot. But, Mike, we've seen it time and time again. That's Quest, ball. Cuesta players. That's ball story. Right there? That's all ball. He hits the ball first. Ball yep. right there. Yep. Hits the ball first. And then follows at the, through. I mean, well, at, at that point, you've, you've already hit the ball. You haven't fouled the shooter. You've already blocked the shot. 64-52. Just to finish the point about Walker, seeing him get a lot of offensive rebounds as Gilbert will try for three rims high, no good, followed by Witterberg. But no one puts a body on him because Cuesta players are getting into the lane, driving to the glass, and drawing defenders, and Walker really taking full advantage. Ray, through the hands of Walker, Witterberg has the steal. It's a 10-point game with under two minutes. Henry, Johnson. Got to take that shot. Just you, hit a three moments ago. You just got to take that shot. You don't have time. Now he'll try. McVitie got a block. piece. Waiters gets it to Ray. Ugh. Tate nearly has the steal. I want to be clear. The officiating is not what costs Ventura this game. Poor offense. Very little movement. Lack of urgency in the first half through much of the first part of the second half. That said... Officiating tonight, pretty poor. <laughs> really on both sides. McVitie going to peel out. Chance for Cuesta to run a little clock down to a minute 20. Pirates going to run out of time here tonight. Nice hands. They get the steal, three on two. You got to pull up there. Henry. To the glass, missed the layup. McVitie pulls down another rebound. So easy to forget TJ McVitie. Outstanding rebounder for this team. Double digit rebounds in seven of the first 11 games of the season for McVitie, who was really shouldering the load in terms of rebounding. But when Ethan Walker comes into the lineup, that ends up being a boon for TJ McVitie, taking some of the pressure off of him as Walker's rebounding has bolstered this Cuesta lineup. But McVitie with a number of strong boards here in this second half, showing that that is definitely part of his game as well. 107 remaining in the game, 
and Cuesta on their way to what would be their third win in a row and their 10th on the season. And for the Pirates, uh, going back to the top of our broadcast tonight, uh, really in a situation at 12 and 11 where realistically, four and one at the absolute worst, maybe even five and zero oh to get themselves into the postseason. And uh, they don't do themselves any favors with this one. They'll drop to 12 and 12. And you still got matchups with Allen Hancock and Moore Park remaining uh, on the season, in addition to a couple of road contests. And there's no guarantees there. So Pirates uh, in a precarious spot as the postseason goes. Oh, so close a year ago. Overtime at Citrus. Oh. Citrus, another perennial power here in the south. For the team in the top 25 in the 3C2A. Yeah, it's a tough, a tough team to play and a tough spot to go to win as well. And again, I, I think you can't, you can't say enough about this Cuesta team and uh, the one and eight start again, stumbling out of the gate uh, as they have done uh, a few times in recent years. But uh, this coaching staff, these young players, have really dug in and uh, and turned it around. And uh, this is uh, an obviously much different team than we saw just a few weeks ago when the Pirates went up to Cuesta and won by 32. Yeah. Kai Johnson into the front court. Lost it on the way up and out of bounds and maybe a microcosm of the whole night there for the Pirates. Johnson trying to get to the glass. Jeff, I, I just don't understand, like, how is this a 64-54 game? This should be a 30-point blowout. Yeah, it, we, we referenced that in the first half where the Pirates were struggling so much from the field. You felt like they were lucky to be as close as they were. Yeah. But they just never found their way. And, you know, give the Pirates a lot of credit as well. Uh, this has been a spirited uh, latter stages of this second half. They have tried to make a run, and they've made a little run, but they're going to run out of time here. Some big shots down the stretch for Cuesta as well to really salt this one away. McFeedy giving chase, and it's going to stay with Cuesta as the Pirates. Nobody gets on that basketball quickly, and McVitie alertly able to get in there, get a hand on it, and it's off of Ventura. And now down to 30 seconds, only about a four-second difference. Johnson going to pick up the foul with 27.7. Some nice pieces for Coach Rusty Blair. You know, hey, this this is a team coming in. They go on a run. Very dangerous, especially when you have a player like Drew Ardoin. Uh, one of the most player, impressive players that I've seen this season uh, can get to a spot, can rise up good elevation on his mid-range jump shot. Yeah. And can absolutely light it up. He is a sophomore, but Mavidi and Walker both freshmen. Yeah. So presumably you never know in these situations what the plans uh, for these uh, young men are. But a chance possibly to build off that formidable front court going into next season. Buhan fouled in the backcourt with 19.2. Uh, a reminder, we're going to step aside very quickly at the conclusion of this one, rejoin you uh, in short order uh, for the women's game. Again, Cuesta and Ventura, the women's game, coming up uh, about, what is it, 20 minutes, I believe? Uh, technically, did they set the clock for 20? I think they set it for 20, but we're about on time to start uh, when we need to start. So. Uh, we'll step aside. You go to our website, www.socalcollegesports.com. Also on the VC Sports Network, vcweplayhard.com. It is coaches versus cancer tonight. Buhan hits both free throws. Tate missed the scoop. And now Buhan can run it out. Yep. And for the Cougars, went on a little run after the Pirates jumped out to an 8-4 lead. And frankly, Michael never looked back after that quick run to grab the lead and just built from there. Uh, this is an impressive turnaround for a young Cuesta team. After the first matchup between these two teams, they completely reversed the trend coming here to Ventura. They win it 67-54. That will wrap up our coverage of game one. Thanks so much for joining us. So long, everybody. We'll see you for the women's game in a few minutes.